All right, so in this video, we're going to demonstrate some basic plotting functionality within MATLAB. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll understand how to create some basic variables, how to plot those, uh, those functions, and then how to manipulate uh, and label your plot. So the first thing I'm going to do is work in the editor. Um, remember, I'm not interested in working in the uh, command window. I just want to work in the editor. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clear MATLAB's memory. And then for good measure, I'm also going to close all. That means I'm going to close all open figure windows. And that's typically a good practice to do because if you don't do that, you want, might wind up in a situation where you're creating new plots on top of old plots and it can get a little bit ugly. So it's just good practice. Always start your functions, always start your scripts with clear and close all. Good. So let's say I want to plot uh, a sine wave um, of some frequency between two different values of time. Okay, so let's set this up good programming style. Let's say the frequency I want to plot at is omega equals, I don't know, pi, uh, pi radians per second. And let's say I want it, I want to plot it between um, t start equals negative 2.5 seconds and t end equals positive 2.5 seconds. Okay, so those are my basic parameters. So now we need to define first the time vector, and then I need to plot, then I need to define the function. So there's two ways I can define time. Uh, both, of, both are okay, I'll show you both, and you can just kind of pick whichever one makes more sense to you. Uh, one is called uh, lin space, and I'm going, the way lin space works is you say, I want to create numbers starting at t start, which in our case t start is minus 2.5, and I want those numbers to end at t end, which is positive 2.5, and then how many points do I want between them? Well, let's just say for the sake of argument, I want a thousand points. So the lin space command will give me a thousand time points evenly spaced between minus 2.5 and plus 2.5. My alternate option is to say t equals t start oops, t start, colon, point, oh, I don't know, point 0.01 to t end. Okay, if I use line 9 instead of line 8, this will create uh, an array of values starting at minus 2.5 with an increment of 0 0.01 until I reach positive 2.5. So the difference is that if you go this way with line 8, you get exactly 1,000 points, but it figures out what the spacing is between adjacent points. Whereas if you use line 9, you don't know quite how many points you're going to get. I mean, you could calculate it, but you're not specifying it, but you are specifying exactly the, the time between points. So for the sake of argument, let's just use line 8. I should also point out that if uh, the use of the variables kind of, um, kind of is a little bit cumbersome for you, you're certainly welcome to say this, t equals lin space minus 2.5 to 2.5 to 1,000, all right? Um, or 500 or whatever number you think works here. Uh, but in general, it's considered good programming style to, to, to uh, just list all your variables at the beginning and then just use them in functions as you move down, like I'm going to do here. Okay, so now let's do um, our function. So x equals sine of omega t. So x is going to be the sine of all the values in t with frequency omega. Okay, so now I should have, if I run this, I'm actually going to run this just as is right now. And you can see here are all the variables I have. So I've got uh, my time array had a thousand elements in it. My x array also has a thousand elements in it. And that makes sense because I've got, I'm basically making a function x of t. So this is x of t and this is t. Okay, and finally I'm going to plot it. So the way I do plot is I simply say plot t comma x. And I'll hit the run command again. And there's my figure window. And I'm going to dock that just so I don't have to have it floating around. And it looks pretty good, don't you think? Good, and you can see that it starts at minus 2.5 and it goes to plus 2.5. Now, here's the advantage of why it's nice to list all our variables in the beginning. Because now I can come and say, change my frequency to 1.5 pi. Run it again. Alright, and now my frequency has been updated. 
So the advantage of, of defining my frequency at the beginning is that uh, I don't really have to scroll down through my code and find every single place where I had an omega. Uh, it just I just do it once at the beginning and then I know I've, I've got it done right. Good. So the next thing I want to show you is how to label your act, label your, your plot. So one thing you can do is you can type, use the xlabel command and I'm going to use single quotes to specify a string. So let's say I want to say that my x-axis is time in seconds and I'm going to label my y-axis x of t. So in MATLAB, anytime you want to specify a string, which is what you need for a label, you have to put the quote, you put it in single quotes. All right, so let's run that. So now you can see I've got, I've labeled my x axis and I've labeled my y axis, which is nice. And now I'm going to give it a title, um, my first plot, or whatever you want. And the last thing you can do that's fun is create a legend. Um, which works like this. All right, so here's my title up top, and here's my legend X of T, which is nice and color coded. All right, so that's fun. Now, uh, some basic manipulations to go along with this. Um, maybe you don't like the color blue. Okay, so when you come to create your plot, you can say a comma. You can put another comma, so you're going to enter basically a third argument here. And I can put R in single quotes, and now my plot is in red. Okay, I've got R for red. I can do G for green. Uh, there's a few others. There's M, oops, not J. There's M for magenta. Okay, and so on and so forth. And there's other options where you can actually specify any old color you want, but those are the basic options. All right, the last thing um, I'll show you is um, how to do another plot. So let's say I create another function y. y equals a sine of 2 times omega times t. So whatever double the frequency of omega. So the way you do this is after you create the first plot, you execute the hold on command, and then you plot the second function, t comma y. Uh, let's plot that one in, oh, I don't know, black. And if I add another legend entry, y of t, oops, you can see now they're both both functions are on my plot, and both of them are marked in the legend. So that's your basic plotting. What the hold on command does is it tells MATLAB not to wipe the screen, uh, not to let the the new plot obliterate the old plot. So if you use the hold on command, then when it goes to do the plotting of y of t, it holds, it keeps x of t uh, on the page as well. So that's some basic plotting for you. Uh, in the next video, I'll show you how to do some further modifications of the figure window and how to save your, um, your videos to, sorry, how to save your uh, plots as figure files to bring into Microsoft Word.